Boy, we continue in the stock market to just smash records. The Nasdaq trading today for the first time ever above that round number of nine. Thousand. Now, as we wind down the year, we can also point out that global markets have added more than $17 trillion in value in the year 2019. Senior Wealth Advisor Courtney Dominguez joining us, and so is Kadita Group President Gary B. Smith on whether the rally continues into 2020. So, Courtney, you first on this. I mean, it's, it, the run, it's been a crazy run in stocks. It really started, mm -hmm. if you think about it, a year ago today with the big rally we had the day after Christmas after the Christmas Eve sell-off last year. So now as we get set for a new year, NASDAQ 9000, what's next? What are you thinking about? I'm so really optimistic on where the markets are going in 2020. What's kind of interesting is if you look at this historically, uh, when you have a year where the markets are up over 20 percent, on average, the Dow has been up over 75 percent of the time with an average of close to 9 percent. And the S&P 500 has been up over 83 percent of the time with an average of over 11 percent. So past returns are not really indicative of future returns, but if stats are on our side or history is on our side, I think the markets are still under good value. There's still a lot of room to grow. And I think there's really a lot of that potential as we've seen in the past. Now, Gary, you and I spoke a couple days ago, I guess, right before Christmas, and you're, you're more of a worrier, right? I mean, uh, and, and, and <laughs> <laughs> which is nothing wrong with that. Someone, someone's got to. But how do you look at this yeah. run? Like we're at this point, is it, um, is it getting towards a point where you are getting more and more worried? Yeah, absolutely. Look, Courtney brings up some very good points. I would argue slightly, as you imply, the other side. We're up from that rally day you talked about a year ago uh, this time almost 36 percent that's not even including today's gains it my, i can remember when nasdaq 5000 was a big deal it just you know mm -hmm. we talked about this you know a few days ago as you said there's there's just it inevitable there's got to be some black swan out there I, I don't know what it is is it a terrorist attack is it this whole Trump impeachment taking a turn no one anticipated. Is there, does China get all of a sudden they rescind what they've done and Trump vice versa and the whole trade war thing becomes inflamed again? I don't know. Well, you know what, I am Let me worried stop you for that one it just. Second, Gary. So yeah. that, that is one of the things, if you think about it, that held some investors out this year. And, you know, they missed yeah. out on some big gains because in their mind they were saying this trade war is a mess, this and that. Something's going to happen. And next thing you know, Nothing did happen or some of those issues started to resolve themselves. And some of those people that had that Agreed. mindset, you know, they missed out on the rally. Isn't that fair? Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact of the matter is there is still, I don't know what the exact I can't remember if it's like five trillion in cash still on the sideline. So that would argue toward a more positive kind of toward in, in Courtney's camp that the market has more fuel to run. Maybe I'm just, you're right. Maybe I'm just a born warrior. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, someone's got to. Someone's got to. I want to talk to, to you guys a little bit about retail, obviously, uh, day after Christmas, Boxing Day in the UK. But retail sales for this holiday season up 3.4% from last year, okay? But the real number that people are highlighting today, Courtney, online sales surging 18.8%, almost a 19% gain online retail holiday sales, according to the metrics we have so far this year compared to last. Um, observations, what do you make of this, this season? What stood out to you? I think it's it's so important that we look at how this holiday spending has become because what we can't forget is consumer spending is about 70% of our economy. And right now we're really seeing a strong consumer and we did get some nervousness this year and people saying, OK, are we going to continue to see that through the holidays? And that is exactly what we saw. And right now we're still seeing un, un, I'm sorry, unemployment at near 50 year lows. Inflation has been really muted and wages are rising faster than inflation. So you're seeing consumers have this extra money right now and that confidence that they are spending right. their money. They don't feel like they need to be stockpiling everything. They are putting it back into the economy right now. And I think, again, that's probably a good sign of where the markets are heading next year as we continue to see a really strong consumer. If we continue to kind of play our, our roles here, Gary, and you're the worrier for the day, is there anything on the consumer front? Because as Courtney points out, I mean, just on the face of things, things look great and have for a long time for the, uh, the American consumer. Um, anything that worries you there? 
Well, the, the, the worry is this. There was an article today, I think it was in the Wall Street Journal, that now, I mean, if you, you want to argue positively online, it, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to do. But even the, <clears throat> the high-end malls that had been kind of resistant to the shuttering, like the Short Hills Mall, the Beverly uh, uh, Hills Mall, are starting to see problems. Uh, is that a problem for bricks and mortar? I think you know, is it the beginning to the end now, if you will? Maybe. And I don't know if online can hold up the entire retail segment. But the other worry, slight, is consumer credit. It's so easy now to get credit. It's so easy to do it online. It's like going to, you know, Las Vegas, where all of a sudden at the end of the day, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize I lost so much money. So those are you two want minor a, concerns. A last word, Courtney, on either one of those two, whether there's a concern about the consumer on the credit side or the idea that, you know, online can. It's, it looks like it can, but maybe over the long term there's something we're missing. It can just pick up the slack completely with the um, obvious decline in, in brick and mortar. Courtney, what do you think? Yeah, and I actually would argue that when we look at credit right now, the consumer is actually much more under leveraged than they have been in the past, specifically like right before the big recession. Um, consumers actually have a lot less debt on hand right now, and they have done a lot better job of saving. So they have much more of an emergency fund on hand. Right. We talked earlier about how much cash there is on the sidelines right now. That's because investors have been saving. So I'm not so worried about people being um, over indebted right now or anything like that. I think there is still a lot of cash on the sidelines, whether we are buying things in the economy, whether investors start to put that into the markets. I think there's really still a lot of upside potential here. All right, guys, thank you.